लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन टूडे हेयर विद अस इज द नेक्स्ट सुपरस्टार ऑफ पाकिस्तान फुटबॉल इमरान कियानी ही इज अ चेल्सी फैन आई कैन नॉट बिलीव दैट आई एम इंटरव्यूइंग हिम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिकॉज ही इज द फर्स्ट एवर पाकिस्तानी ओवरसीज प्लेयर हु हैज कम ऑन माय चैनल एंड ऑन माय पॉडकास्ट एंड ही हैज आल्सो प्लेड फॉर द चेल्सी यूथ एकेडमी यस यू हर्ड इट राइट he has played for the chelsea youth academy uh, from age 11 to age 16 and then he went to uh, south united right south, south, south united, united. So, and after that uh, he went to uh, from sutton united he went to south end united and he uh, spent two years there as well and after that he went to dover athletic and uh, dover athletic was the main club where he got his you know breakout season in the sixth tier of uh, english football and then we have seen that he progressed and now we are watching him scoring goals left right and center for uh, uh, you know white hawk fc he was born in surrey england uh, working if i'm not mistaken you yeah, were born in surrey correct, right yeah. Yeah. so uh, it is a privilege to have you imran and uh, how are you man and uh, how was the experience coming to pakistan um first of all we thank you for having me on the channel um yeah i'm all good alhamdulillah i hope you're well as well um in terms of the experience um coming to pakistan yeah it was one that I'll, i'll remember for a long time it was a very enjoyable experience i've been there before obviously i've got family there so yeah. i try to visit as much as i can but obviously coming there to play for the national team is a completely different experience in itself but yeah no complaints i re- had a really good time there um so yeah i'm real so uh, you are a chelsea fan and you said in a podcast uh, that uh, you uh, even though you live in england you have tried to stay connected to your roots and uh, i actually wanted to know uh, how many times have you visited uh, pakistan before you know the the tajikistan game and who uh, which one of your relatives you know uh, live here uh, who yeah. do you visit here most of the time so um before covid i used to go every year every other year i try to go back home and visit my family basically most of my mom's side lives in um in pakistan i live in rawalpindi okay. which is which is where i'm from so um that's who i oh. go and visit yeah so you are a pindi boy and i am also from pindi islamabad boy. so yeah so yeah, not yeah. too far yeah so, so alhamdulillah they came to watch the game and they really enjoyed it um so that's i try to go back yeah every year or two but after covid it was difficult obviously with the travel restrictions and uh I had stuff going on here with football so I hadn't gone for a while but alhamdulillah I managed uh, to to visit back home through the national team so yeah really good So did you visit your uh, you know mom's side of the family uh, when you came here in uh, Yeah I did um my my mom um he would go to the to the hotel like after we had dinner and, and just spend a bit of time make sure um, everything was okay so I saw him quite a lot and there was a couple of occasions where we had a bit of free time for a couple of hours where um i, I went to bindi and uh, spent a bit of time with my nan or nana bu and and yeah it was really good so it was nice to see them um, obviously at the game it was difficult just because of the security and the players had to stay separate and stuff but i managed i managed to see them um yeah quite a few times alhamdulillah which was nice yeah. so for you it was you know home soil uh, no problems at all <laughs> and uh, that's why your your urdu is so good because i have heard uh, you know uh, speak i also have a uh, i also have a cousin who lives in philadelphia usa oh yeah so uh, he is also from my mom's side of the family so he speaks urdu exactly like you <laughs> yeah so you remind me of, of him yeah Yeah, yeah. name jab chota tha mere parents uh, urdu sikha liya tha to abhi tak aati hai lekin ek do lafz yeah. shayad nahi aaye lekin alhamdulillah wo sahi bol sakte wo sare wo local players kare the wo khush the kyunki we both sakte ho phir koi achhi connection build ho sakta na to alhamdulillah ji and uh, you were also you know uh, with the, the team uh, since the training camp began, uh, began on i think yeah. 4th 4th of october yeah. 4th of november sorry 4th november, november yeah 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 uh, you were there for uh, since the first day and uh, that shows your dedication and commitment as well uh, i would definitely want to ask you uh, uh, imran that how did your journey uh, begin uh, I mean, at what age did you st- uh, start? We we all know that you went to the Chelsea Academy. I have yeah. uh, told your entire history in this show. <laughs> but 
Yeah, what so what made you what made you fell in love with football? Um, like Liverpool, Liverpool was the reason I fell in love with you know football. football what yeah. was the reason for you? For me, to be honest, um, I, I kicked a ball as 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 young as I can remember. Um, my dad used to joke that he called me Imran to play cricket, like Imran Han, but I ended up playing football. Um, so yeah, ever since yeah. I was young, I was always had a ball at my feet. I just enjoyed enjoyed playing it, enjoyed running around my friends. Um, and then I think yeah. at the age of around eight nine. um some of my friends were staying after the school um and i was asking them like oh what are you guys up to and they said that there's like a football club so they said that to me to join so i joined next week and i remember um i think my sister done really well one of the parents was saying to my dad when he came and picked up like oh who does he play for like and my dad was like that was his first session so then after that she was like oh let's get him into a local club and i joined the club that my friends played for and then i remember my first game i, sc- I scored a hat trick and they- i was just enjoying it like, i didn't think anything of it and um yeah like i said i always had a passion for it and then luckily after a season or two chelsea came and showed some interest so alhamdulillah yeah i i was involved in their setup for like you say 5 years from 11 to 16 which was which was a really good experience but that's kind of how it all started uh i just want to boast a bit uh bangladesh fans watch me nepal fans watch me india yeah. watch me i am interviewing a guy who has played for chelsea <laughs> this is a big deal for me <laughs> So no I'm just joking man I'm just just messing uh, That's around. okay. Uh, I uh, I actually wanted to know uh, you just told me that how you you know fell in love with football. But uh, you know there is a, this notion that there is a huge gap between uh, the South Asian football and the European football. Obviously there is there, there is no doubt about that. But uh, did did you feel it uh, when you you know uh, joined the uh, Pakistan team did you feel something like that? I think uh, in, in terms, terms of, of quality, quality yeah, of play yeah. I'd say quality yeah. wise there's definitely talent in Pakistan um you know yeah. there's there's players with great uh, great ability and I think the only thing that's kind of different so obviously England Europe compared to the South Asian countries is it's just the league system for example the infrastructure in England is is second to none yeah. so if you imagine every town every shire in, in in England there's a football club so there's there's so much opportunity to play consistent games week in week out all the leagues are super competitive there's you know millions of players fighting for if you look at the top 6 7 leagues probably 6 700 spots but there's millions of players fighting for them so so much competition so much um infrastructure that's put in play so i'd say because of that because of you get coaching get from a young age um in england i think naturally you're able to reach your potential faster and and pick up little things that um you may not pick up from if you don't play competitive if you don't have um top quality coaching so i think inshallah in the next few years if pakistan can make a league if they can keep you know getting the top coaches to come over obviously we've got a really good head coach at the moment um i think there's no doubt why the talent that we have can really reach its full potential so yeah because you know uh, in in england we often see that there is fa youth cup yeah uh, there are different youth competitions in every you know age group every single age group has a and that's why uh, i think the competition is pretty uh, ruthless for kids and yeah. most of the kids don't make it at the top level that's that's the reason uh, which i feel uh, yeah also uh, i think another another uh, topic stems from this uh, that what has you know uh, white hawk fc uh, you know taught you and what is the difference between your manager in white hawk fc and stefan constantine what's the different uh, difference in the you know philosophy of those two managers the main identity yeah in terms of what the kind of coaching at white hawk and even previous clubs i've been at um i think it's the kind of intricate details that i've i've learned especially when you play first team football obviously i went mm-hmm. from playing my age group under 10s 11s 12s under 16 under 18s and then when i was around 17 I started making making my first team debut and I was playing with people but that were double my age they had families they had kids and you know they were the game the results kind of influence how much they earn so whereas when you're younger it's more about the developmental side of it when you're in academies and stuff when you get to the first team level there's points on the line and people's livelihoods on the line so it's much more pressure so I think um yeah being involved in an environment like that at White Hawk has, has taught me um kind of how to handle the pressure I think I've learned little things um in terms of how to use my body better. Um, obviously you're like I said I'm playing against people that are much more bigger than me, older than me, so um little things like that. Also game management. When you're younger, I'm sure if you looked at under 11 games, 
all 11 kids are just going to be chasing the ball, whereas now, if you're winning 1-0, it's getting towards late in the game, you might do little things to kind of waste a bit of time or um, keep the ball, etc. So I think, I, th I think game knowledge and, and tactical awareness has, has dramatically increased from all the coaches I've had in England. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'd say um, from playing here. I see, I see. And uh, I just, uh, I was just, you know, talking about Stefan Constantine. Uh, when you were, when you made your debut, obviously, versus uh, Saudi Arabia and you came in the second half. Uh, yeah. How surreal yeah. was the feeling for you, first of all? And uh, this, is a, this is a technical question, the next one. What role did Stefan Constantine give you that this is your role? This is what you have to do when you go on the pitch. And this is what you have to do, deliver. Uh, um, so yeah, in terms of the moment where I made my debut, is it's one of the greatest moments, one of my proudest moments so far. You know, playing for your country is is is, is something that you dream of as a kid, and and for me to kind of live that dream and make it a reality, I was I was I was so happy, and I'm ever thankful for for Stefan for giving me that debut. Um, in terms of the tactical side and what he kind of told me, he he wanted me to kind of stay solid defensively, keep my shape, um, make it difficult for Saudi to play through us, um, and uh, he. He just said, "When you get on the ball, be positive." Um, obviously, they were going to have more possession of us, so a lot of a lot of my work was to to do running defensively. Like I said, cut off passing lanes, press when I can. So that was kind of the information that that I got given, and um, I feel like we I think we played really well against Saudi. I think unfortunately we obviously conceded those two late goals against um, against them in the yeah, ninety plus was, minutes. Uh, but unlucky as well. Saudi, Saudi, yeah, a bit frustrating. Yeah. I think we gave a good account of ourselves. I think Saudi have, have beaten the likes for Argentina who have, you know, Messi and Di Maria and crazy players. So I think we can be proud. And like I mentioned earlier, I think Pakistan football is going in a really good direction, especially with the help of coaches like Stefan Constantine. And uh, I saw that game. I saw that game twice and uh, the full 90 minutes. And I did observe that you guys did not let them penetrate, you know, through the middle because you were trying to keep that shape of 4-4-2. And sometimes it yeah. was like four, five, one. So uh, that was uh, very good, yeah. and it was a low block uh, against Tajikistan. I don't know what happened. You guys went a bit expansive because you were not playing in such a mid yeah. block or low block, low block in that in that game. Uh, what happened yeah. versus Tajikistan, in your opinion? It's yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. I think, like you mentioned, um, against Saudi, we were very. Um, structured and we had a, a low block. I think we had a similar kind of setup against Tajikistan, I think, but for whatever reason, the gaps were a bit too big between the defence and midfield and then the midfield and the strikers, so they found it easy to kind yeah, of play between the lines. And they were operating very easily. Yeah. Between the lines, exactly. They, I think they moved the ball really well and credit to them, they, you know, they got a good result uh, on, on their side, but yeah, I think, I think when we conceded two early goals, it was always going to be an uphill battle, so yeah, I, I was a bit disappointed with that result, but like I said, every time I wear the green shirt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna try my hardest. So I was just trying to run as much as I can, make it as difficult as I can. But unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, I think in the second half, uh, Pakistan played a bit better uh, in the Tajikistan game. When you left on, uh, when you went on to the left uh, flank, you went, uh, you went to yeah. the left wing uh, position. Uh, did Stephen Constantine yeah. uh, deliberately, you know, uh, position you there, and what was the thinking behind it? Yeah, I think um, he wanted to change things up at half time, um, and uh, I, I was put out on the left, um, which I'm comfortable playing in. I can play across the front three, a right striker or left. So, I think the thinking behind that was he wanted me to kind of, when I did get the ball, he wanted me to cross it fairly early across that near post and hope that one of the strikers can get at the end of it. Um, and also, I think defensively. Like similar to how when I was playing as a striker, you just wanted me to make sure that it's difficult for my winger to get the ball from the fullback, that we're narrow um, and and that we're cutting the passing lane. So I think that was the thinking behind it. Um, and obviously it gave someone an opportunity to come on at half time as well. So Okay, okay. Uh, you uh, said uh, in, a, in a podcast that you uh, absolutely adore Ronaldo, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. And because yeah. you are uh, left-footed, so you also like Mohamed Salah and the likes of Riyad Maris. What have you learned from uh, Cristiano yeah. and what have you learned from, you know, my favorite player, Mohamed Salah, obviously. And uh, with, yeah, this, with say... this, I want to ask, do you prefer playing on the right wing or uh, do you prefer uh, playing as a striker? 
Yeah. Um, okay, so in terms of uh, like Ronaldo, he was always my kind of idol growing up. I think what I learned from him, just the way he, he carries himself, the way he leads his life was something that really inspired me to do kind of similar things, you know. Every avenue um, of football that he can perfect, he, he tries to do so in terms of diet, sleep, um, gym work, extra work. So I try to implement those same factors uh, into my own game and I feel like that really made me become a disciplined individual and hope, like progressing by the game to get to the level that I've got to and hopefully I can keep progressing. Um, in terms of Salah, I think his story shows that football's a game of opinions. He went to Chelsea and it didn't work out for him and he was probably told that he wasn't good enough but Obviously, you've seen what he's done at Liverpool. He's, he's broken so many records and he's scoring most weeks. So I think his story inspires me in terms of perseverance, never to give up. Um, and obviously, because he's left-footed, I like to kind of emulate some of the goals that he scores. I think he's quite quick direct, which is uh, some of the um, skills that I'd associate myself with. So, so yeah, and I think you also mentioned... What was the uh, second thing that you mentioned? Which position do you prefer? Right wing, left wing, striker? Oh, yeah. Where do you want to play? So, naturally, I was, yeah, I'm a winger and I like to play on the okay. right because, like I said, I'm left footed so I can cut in yeah. and shoot, but um, I'm happy to play wherever the coach Obviously. wants to play me. Like, in the second half against Tajikistan, yeah. I, I played yeah. on the left and I've got no problem with that. I can beat my man and try and get across it. Um, and also, strike I enjoy, especially in a two. I think if I have, like, a maybe physical striker alongside me, I can run in behind and play off him. Or, or equally, I can be more of a target man and... I really enjoy striker because you get more opportunity to score, which is something that I love doing, scoring goals. Um, and I pride myself on always being the hardest worker. Whatever position I play, I'm going to make sure to, to press the lives out of the defenders and, and make it a tough game for them. So, yeah, I like to play anywhere across the front three. Prefer to be right or striker, but happy to be on the left as well. And uh, uh, by, the, by the looks of it, I think uh, if a manager wants to, to get the best out of you, I think uh, it would be nice if yeah. you play at the you know, right wing, maybe. Maybe if you play at the right wing, because that's where you yeah. are comfortable the most. So that's what I got the gist from your, uh, you know, statement. Uh, yeah. Many uh, players in Pakistan uh, ask me, Imran, that uh, what should they do to get uh, out of Pakistan and get a, you know, very wholesome kind of uh, contract? <laughs> because many players are associated with clubs in Pakistan, but they want to move abroad. And there was a guy. Um, who moved yeah. abroad and uh, he's a 19 year old kid, 18 year old kid. He's playing for Werder Bremen under 19. Uh, Walid Suleiman, I think his name is. Okay. So, yeah, uh, he he was our local player. Uh, he he went from I think uh, Smurfs FC. Smurfs FC is also in Raval Uh So that's, that's okay. the local yeah, club yeah. where he uh, he groomed himself. So uh, any thoughts on that and uh, what are what is your message for them as well, for the local kids who want to play for Pakistan World Cup? I'd say, yeah, um, obviously, I know like you mentioned, a lot of them want to go out and play um, in, a, in, a, in a country yeah. where the leagues are obviously competitive and they can train week in, week out. So I'd say like, obviously, if they've got the opportunity to be at the national team level, that's a, that's a great honour. So just by doing well and working really hard, hopefully, there's always people watching so someone can come and pick them up. I think there's obviously issues with it, like the visas and stuff, but I think, yeah, if you keep working hard, remembering Allah, then anything's possible. And I really hope that some of the boys that obviously I played with the national team, like I said, they're so talented. I really hope that they can get an opportunity abroad. Um, I know there's, um, I know the coach is trying to help them and I'll, I'll do my best as well to speak to my contacts here because, yeah, yeah there's definitely talent. So. It's just, it's just, I think, a case of maybe take a bit of time. And hopefully, like I said, there's going to be leagues in Pakistan, so I think that's going to become even more competitive. If you look at Saudi, like, it, they built it, they built their kind of infrastructure 10, 15 years, and now they're, they're playing in one of the best leagues in the world, so there's no reason why we can't do the same. I think uh, Otis also brought a coach from Grimsby Town. I think he was uh, a coach, and he also helped out you guys in the, in the fitness regimes and the fitness trainings. I think he was a physical fitness coach. Uh, during this, uh, these two uh, World Cup qualifiers of uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Tajikistan, if, if I'm not mistaken, I saw that post on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so he was from the club of Otis Khan, uh, Grimsby Town. Yeah, we had um, two. Yeah, we had all the coaches were really good. To be fair, like both the local ones, the ones that came from abroad, they all had their own kind of expertise and knowledge yeah. and we were just trying to absorb as much as we can and get as fit as possible to put us in the best kind of position to to play the two games that we had so yeah 
they were all really good martial arts. Uh, Imran, I actually, in the end, I want to t- want you to say that the next time you come to Pakistan, I want a signed shirt from you <laughs> because I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, uh, I just wanted to say that what do you think uh, can we compete against Jordan in Islamabad on 21st March? I know the game is very very far ahead of 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 its time, but yeah. I still believe that uh, maybe we can fight. What do you what do you think about about? Yeah, in terms of the shirt, inshallah, if I, when I, if I, when, if and when I come to the next camp, I'll, I'll try and sort that out for you, hundred um, percent. And then regarding the game against uh, Jordan, I think, obviously, I feel like at the moment anyone that we play is going to be a tough fixture, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to give it our all. I think every camp the boys were saying that they've had is getting better and better in terms of quality, in terms of the training. So um, I've got, I've got high hopes for that game. I think. We've been given. I know the local players have been given like a program to to make sure they lay fit throughout um, this off period. And obviously, I'm the diaspora players are going to be with their respective clubs, training most days and playing. So I'm going to do everything I can to stay in the best shape possible. And I think if we play kind of similar to how we played against Saudi and and all really fight for the team, I think there's no reason why we can't get a positive result. Inshallah, just everyone can remember us in their duas and and yeah, I think. We're going in a really good direction, so I'm really looking forward to that. Game. Uh, Imran, I wanted to ask you: Are you still uh, living in Surrey, or are you living uh, somewhere else? I'm, I'm still in Surrey. I'm still You're based still in Surrey. You're still based in yeah. uh, Surrey. Okay, okay. Uh, Surrey is a town which is, uh, you know, uh, mentioned a lot in the Harry Potter books, uh, and I've read all of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I think some of the movies were filmed like in yeah. Surrey, so. I have yeah. watched it a lot, uh, especially I think Order of the Phoenix was the was the movie in which, uh, you know, uh, I saw it. Uh, anyways, yeah. we, are, we are digressing. <laughs> I wanted to ask you one last thing. Uh, yeah. What is your goal in football? What is your goal in life? And what is the biggest strength of Imran Kiani? Oh, big question to end on. Um, in terms of my goal, I'd say. I'm very ambitious. I want to play at the highest level possible. Um, inshallah, that can be the Prem one day or one of the top leagues in Europe or Saudi, for example. And I'm going to do everything in in kind of my in my ability that I can and work as hard as I can. That I want to look back at my career and have no regrets. That oh, I could have done this. I could have done that. That's one thing that I live by. So, yeah, inshallah, play at the highest level possible and and leave the game with a legacy. People remembering me like okay, yeah, Imran was a really good player and and look up to me. I think. Another big goal of mine is to to lead lead a good life in terms of just my character. I want to inspire the next generation. Um, you are only twenty one. You are, what you are only twenty one. Especially... You are already thinking of inspiring the you know <laughs> the younger generation. You are very <laughs> yeah, young yeah, right now. Myself, but yeah, yeah. Now I'm, I'm I'm I know I'm in a privileged yeah. position myself, so I want to kind of like I said, lead lead my life in the best way possible and and show that regardless of color regardless of religion if you work hard and and god is on your side then you know you can go really far in the game um and hopefully i can help back home you know like i've always when i was young i always used to dream of setting up an academy like ik7 back home and and giving kids opportunities to play obviously now there's hopefully going to be a league structure in the next few years so anything i can do to help i will do so that's kind of my goals um in terms of football um and what was the second question what, what is imran kiani's biggest strength in football as a footballer oh ah oh, that's a tough one i say my biggest strength um, is mentality mm-hmm. i think i've been through many rejections setback injuries but i've never given up every time i've come back more hungry come back stronger and i think when you get to kind of the elite level in sport everyone's got talent so it's the finer margins that separate you and i feel like my mentality um how hard at work is is unmatched and something that i really pride myself on so i say yeah that's one of my biggest strengths so guys uh this was imran kiani he loves my favorite player mohammed salah he wants to play with him he loves riyad <laughs> mahrez and cristiano ronaldo too and he's a chelsea fan and uh, i don't know if he goes to stamford bridge still do you go to stamford bridge these days I haven't actually no I I haven't watched the game it's, it's it's annoying because whenever they play on Saturdays I usually have my own game so it's difficult to get to games Oh I see I see I see Uh so guys this was Imran Kiani it was a privilege to host him and I loved uh, talking to him uh, we'll uh, have a chat once again 
uh, this will not be the last time that Imran Gyani has come to my podcast. No, and Imran, uh, any last few words in Urdu, uh, if you would like to. Um, I say, both both shukriya to to you for having me on this podcast. Or, inshallah, um, ham Pakistan ka naam roshan kar sakte hai. To, me pura yakin karuga. To, inshallah, ye sari mare waishe, hawaishe, um, kabool hoyegi or. Pakistan Zindabad. Pakistan Zindabad. <laughs> Let's end the podcast on that note. Thank you so much, Imran. You are the next budding superstar, and hopefully, hopefully, we will see you score for Pakistan very soon as well. Thank you. Thank you. Inshallah. Bas dua, mayadak na. Inshallah.